Minister of Transport and Local Government assessing working conditions within his ministry. Local pastors giving support to a march for greater protection of the nation's children. And this year's Coconut Festival said to be one of the biggest ever. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shashina Rolf Arkison. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping the news tonight, the Minister of Transport and Local Government getting a first hand view of operations of the departments within his ministry. During a recent visit to Grand Bahama, the minister was taken on a tour of the various offices to look at working conditions and some of the day to day challenges. Tonight, he shares some of the findings as well as plans to address them. Italia Hall reports. The post office in Freeport has had its share of challenges over the years. The building has been in a state of disrepair for some time now, and employees have been working shorter shifts due to poor working conditions. The Minister of Transport and Local Government, the Honorable Renwood Wells, says he was able to tour the post office and is aware of the situations. There's been some issues with the installed air conditioning units and the building itself. Uh, we are aware of the, what those issues are, and um, we're going to be seeking to address those issues in the new budget period. You know, uh, July 1st is the beginning of the new budget year, and that's when government uh, really lays out during the budget debate in June, we lay out what our priorities are, and so I'm going to be looking forward as to how we can correct any deficiencies that we may have uh, with the post office here in Grand Bahama. He says he wants Grand Bahamians to have confidence in his ministry. Because look what we have done in regards to the post office in, Nas in New Providence. You know, you've had an ongoing situation with the general post office. We're now going to be moving into a beautiful edifice in the town center mall in May. And um, uh, we, the Bahamian people will see that uh, uh, we not only walk the walk, we not only talk the talk, but we walk the walk. He says he also had an opportunity to visit the other post offices on Grand Bahama, heard the concerns, and knows that those issues will be addressed. The minister says there has also been a cry for more staff in several departments that fall under his ministry. Where the support, road traffic, um, the uh, post office, the mayor office, and the government has taken a really keen interest in making sure we write staff the various department, departments in the Ministry of Transport and Local Government. And as it relates to local government, he believes that it is still effective on Grand Bahama. The local government practitioners, the family island administrators here in GB, have been uh, working tirelessly to try and deliver for residents. And uh, the ministry, uh, the department of local government, is come alongside, walking hand in hand with them, seeking to ensure that the residents, uh, the Bahamian people, um, get what it is that they, they are so deserving of. Italia Hall. ZNS Network News. This coming Thursday, residents on Grand Bahama will take part in a march against child sexual molestation in the country. Tonight, local pastors are also joining in the fight and they are encouraging you to do the same. More pastors in the Grand Bahama community are pledging support to the Stop the Molestation March that is set for this coming Thursday. The church has had its fair share of criticisms from some in the community who have questioned their collective voice on this matter. Apostle Anthony Grant says while within the four walls of the church, as a body, they speak out against this heinous act. More must be done, he admits, publicly to bring awareness. When you think about speaking out in public about it, yes, you, you haven't heard from the church as much as you should, maybe, but pastors preach it all the time. They talk to the congregations about it all the time. So it's out there, and our, our people know that we are uh, have a problem with it, that we're against it, and that the children need a voice. You know, we, uh, this kind of, of thing going on in our community is destructive to the next generation. I was, I was reading where the statistics shows that uh, those young people who are promiscuous, sexually promiscuous, 45% of them have been molested. Pastor Cedric Beckles of Life Holiness and Apostle Anne Grant of Agape House Church agree, but they say the people of Grand Bahama must stand up as well, and that is why they should make it a point to attend this march. If we don't do anything to protect our children, we could count the death of the Bahamas. You, you cannot destroy children and then bring them into adulthood whole 
and have a healthy nation. It can't happen. We need stiffer penalties. And I believe that we need penalties for those who have been allowing perpetrators to be empowered. So I'm hoping that the march would bring people out of the closet. A lot of the issues that need to be addressed, all you need is one or two persons to take the courage to bring it public. And I'm hoping that the expression, the ants, come out of the nest. I personally believe that this march should be larger than any political rally we've ever had. Because this is more significant in its outcome than any political rally and political election. I'm praying and I'm believing that every mother, okay, every father, and especially as mothers who have carried these children, sometimes we are the ones who have them in silence because we don't want what has happened to be made known. But this is the time. God has made it known to the prophet that this is the time for us to speak up and not just to speak up but to speak out. This Stop Child Molestation March is the brainchild of Prophetess Rosie Rackley. She says this is the first in a series of initiatives to bring awareness on this serious issue. We the congregation, especially the body of Christ, that we will be silent no more over this issue. Uh, as parents, we will not turn our heads. As spiritual leaders, I have with me pastors and who are speaking out against this. And then we would like to see laws change. No word yet or sighting of fisherman James Green who has been lost at sea for over a week now. Tonight, those who knew him best say they are still holding out, hoping for the best, but fearing the worst. And he's committed to his community. It's been seven days now since 72-year-old fisherman James Green has been missing at sea. Leroy Magoo Rackley, chairman of the Casmer Rackley Basketball Association, fought back tears as he spoke about his friend of over 30 years. I'm good. Yes. I, was, I was just calling him to organize the summer camp for Sandy Point for me for the kids. Um, um, so it wasn't good. And it still ain't good, but um, we just have to wish for the best and uh, accept God's blessings. He says Green's contribution in sports and the development of the youth in Abaco spans decades. And he says, undoubtedly, it is unmatched. He was good to me. Jimmy Green, Frank Abbey were my two personal friends. When, when, it come, when it come to sports and Abaco, and you get on any sports complex, either it's track and field, basketball, baseball, softball, Jimmy Green and Frank Abbey is there. He says Green is a great treasure to the people of Abaco, and because of his hard work, his organization recognized him just last month. He says Green was grateful for the honor. When I walk, when I walk in, he snuck up from the table and he hugged me and he didn't want to let me go. And he said, thank you. And that's the last time he would have seen or spoken to the missing fisherman. One week later, he shares his hope. Well, where they say they're flying in the boat, I don't, I, I, I really don't, I know it's going to be a little, it's, it, I mean, I get hope for the best, but, but, but by God's blessing, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's nowhere, nowhere they're going to come up with Jimmy, not, not out there, because I did a lot of fishing in that area, and then the weather was bad, the weather was bad. But he, he, he was a sweet person, very sweet. Switching gears now, the driver of a dump truck escaped a serious injuries yesterday when the vehicle overturned on the mall drive in the vicinity of AID. The driver, a resident of 8 Mile Walk, was traveling along Queens Highway and attempted to make a right turn on the mall drive when the weight of the dump truck shifted and the truck loaded with soil overturned. The driver was able to get out of that vehicle and though shaken, he walked away without a scratch. Police say there were other vehicles traveling in the immediate area at the time of the incident. Investigations are continuing. Stay with us. There's more news right after the break.